So we're going to go into this lesson here. And it's a really poignant and important topic dealing with the struggle between the spirit and the flesh. Okay? Trying to overcome ourselves. So the title of the lesson is, Is Flesh, Is the Flesh Your God? Okay? A lot of time we want to take and put all the blame on Satan. We want to put all the blame on everything that's outside of us that, that, that is a stumbling block. Instead of the stumbling block that's before us that we are wearing every day, which is this flesh. Never ever looking inward. But we have to understand, like, if there's a problem or a division or an issue, we know that there's one man that's behind that, and that's Satan. So we can't allow Satan to come in our vessels and use us. Okay? So the question is, again, is the flesh your God, right? So we're going to go into the scriptures and just get some examples, right? First, I'm going to read this commentary. So in the world today, most make decisions strictly on how their flesh perceives things and never think about what is necessary according to the Most High for, for our daily existence. We have become a world of mindless robots who react based on only what our own demons expect from us and what our own flesh has grown fond of. Is this life? Is there not more to living than walking about confused and without a true purpose? The most high of the world relies, the, the, the mo most of this world, relies on substances and empty activities that distract them from reality, i.e. like getting things. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, that's a distraction. Getting things, just acquiring things. You understand, no sooner that this world know that when they introduce something to Israelites that we've never had before, it's always a struggle. You get a better job. You get a promotion. You get a this. You get a that. You know what the first thing you're faced with? Whether you're going to serve the most high or you're going to deal with that seventh day of work. Every time, on and on and on and on. But you know why sometimes that thing don't work itself out? Because the most high know that heart. Because what are we doing once we get those finances? Are those finances there to help support the kingdom of the Most High? Or are those finances there for you to get a little bit of extra security for yourself? What is it for? Okay. So the reality is that there, are, there is a judgment for those who live according to the flesh. Are we any different in the truth, being those who claim that we can see, or is our flesh also our God? Let's discuss this struggle. Let's go into the beginning. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 8. Let's deal with it. And the Most High spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. So... This go all the way from the beginning to Noah, from Noah, even, you know, before that with Adam. But we talking about an establishment, a covenant amongst a seed of people, a chosen people, a bloodline, okay, which is us. Read. Verse 10, and with every living creature, 
that is with you. That is with you. Read. Of, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of, and of every beast of the earth with you. Mm. From notice, o- notice here in the scripture, it's just not talk about animals in general. It's a with you. So the covenant was established amongst this family. And everything that's around this family. That's why it's so important when we gather together. Because as we learned about the feast days in Leviticus 23 and we learn in tabernacles, the protection and spirit of the Most High is where the children of Israel are. (laughs) Okay? So this is what we're reading here. He said, listen, I establish a covenant with you and your seed and every animal with you. Okay, because believe me, there's going to be worldwide destruction when the fury of Christ come on this world. But everybody or everything that's with us will be protected. So this covenant was made in the beginning. Okay, read. And of every beast of the earth with you. From all that go out of the ark Mm. to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Mm. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. So here goes the promise. No longer will the world be destroyed with a flood. So we know we don't got to worry about, you know, that's like when we seen rains at Tabernacles. We wasn't, listen, I wasn't worried in the least. That we was going to be swept away. Because there's a promise from the Most High that he wouldn't destroy this world with a flood. Read. Neither shall there, shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Mm. And the Most High said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every, and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. So guess what? That rainbow belonged to us. It don't belong to the Sodomites. It don't belong. It belongs to the children of Israel. That's a token for us. That the Most High promised that look. No longer will this earth be destroyed with a flood. So every time you see that bow. It's a reminder of judgment. Okay. Read. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. See that? Come on. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. Now you see the diversion that's in the earth? Do y'all see that? Because every time you think of a rainbow, you think of sodomites. But every time you see a rainbow, you should think of the covenant that the Most High made between our forefathers and us about the judgment that's to come. But that's the that's that's the the collusion in the earth. Come on. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Mm. And the bow shall be in the cloud. Read. And I will look upon it. That I may remember the everlasting covenant between the most between the most high and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. So when we deal with Atlantis, right, and all the other so-called great pre-flood civilizations that were utterly destroyed, along with those who sided with the Nephilim and their perverse ways of living, we in our time are doing the same thing. And have followed the so-called gods to the point of no return. Even the rainbow has been used as a sign of perversity. When at the beginning it was a sign of judgment of the past perversity. And the promise of a judgment to come different than before. Which would again destroy the wicked. Right? So now we're going to go into 1 Kings. Let's go to 1 Kings. Chapter 17 and verse 1. Come on. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was, who was of the inhabitants of Gilgad, Gilad, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, 
there shall not be due nor rain for nor rain these years, but according to my word. But according to my word. So now we're talking about the prophet here, Elisha, a man that the Most High was using here, okay? And by the power that was endued on him from on high, he made a decree in the earth. No rain. What power that the Most High have from on high that he endued us with? The same power that Elijah wield is the same power that the Most High blessed us with. Now watch this now. Come on. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Saying what? Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, hmm. and hide thyself by the brook of Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have com commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook of Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Now see, anything that you would understand to be in this world and the things that this world teach are off. How not to trust dignitaries and elders. and Now imagine Elijah who commanded it, the earth, to yield under the power of the Most High to not reign, that happened. And guess what? The, 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 the only one at this time here that knew where safety and security was, was Elijah. Go here. This is where food and water is. That you'll be able to last in this trying time. Well, it's not any different to what we, we have now. The Most High is working with men on the earth. The only thing that comes in that causes division is this flesh. This flesh yields distrust, dishonor. Okay? If there be a division amongst you, Satan is there. Yielding division and distrust. But Elijah, he had the authority to command the rain to stop for years. And yet, how many repented of their deeds and asked Elijah the way to make themselves right with the Father? Now, you see that? The same problem persists. Elijah had the foreknowledge and understanding of the Most High and the keys to safety. But brothers and sisters, they, they wasn't feeling him like that. You know why? Because he was a man. He was flesh and blood. I wait till the Most High tell me what to do. When the Most High was working with Elijah. So because of pride, which is a result of flesh, people perished. <laughs> Can y'all... This is documented. Because of, of what the flesh brought in, people lost their lives. So while Elijah was, was well fed, it was so bad in cities that people were eating their own babies. And people will look at the scriptures and magnify a situation like that and say, well, man, y'all ate y'all own babies. Yes, that was the wicked of Israel. Like Elder Gabar was explaining, like, and, and I agree with this, his, his, his perspective. These, these books of the Bible are not about the quote-unquote children of Israel. They're about the righteous prophets dealing with, with the children of Israel. 
and their vantage points and stories about how the Most High delivered them and the few that were riding with them. Okay? Because when we started to research different things and look at these Moabite stones and things like that, and I started to look at the, the, the Bible, I, it gave me a different perspective. I was like, man, so the majority of Israel... You go First Kings, Chronicles, all that on, they were off. I never once viewed the Bible like that. I always would take a book, and it's like, you know, if, if somebody give you an example of a breakdown of what's righteous, outside of looking at the prophets, it's a wrong breakdown. Because the sacrifices that they were doing opposed to what who the most I was working with, was to another God. The things that they were doing up until the time of Christ, even in the time of Christ, there was still a different doctrine in the earth. So when the scriptures say that the kingdom to come is only for a few, it's only a few that get this understanding. Then and now. A few brothers and sisters. That's why the scriptures say that we should serve our master with fear and trembling. Okay. So that sounds just like today. Are you still sure that you have done enough spiritually that you'll turn down the mark of the beast? Because ultimately, brothers and sisters, that's what it's coming to. You know, all these things now that we're dealing with right now when we got to come together amongst the children of Israel in the Sabbath at the holy days and all that. These are test runs. If you're folding now. If there's something greater than what's going on amongst the children of Israel now. That the world has for you. When the mark of the beast come, you will be one of those that fall. And listen, it, here's the decision on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. There is no gray area. You're either going to choose to serve the Most High Ahaya or Satan. Simple. And that's what, when it comes down, that's, that's really the test in the end decision. When the mark of the beast is instituted, it's like, listen, what side are you on? There's no compromise, just like it is it now. It's just the fact that the judgment isn't final right now. Okay? So people have a false sense of time and thinking that, you know what? Hey, I'll get it together. When the time come. Well really. When the time come. Okay. What you're doing now. Is either. You're either. You know. Practicing. The righteous. Rehearsing the righteous acts now. Or. With Satan's to bring. So you're practicing. For what's to come. You're rehearsing. You're getting it. You're trying to perfect it now. So let's go now to 2 Kings 20 and 1. Let's go. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Was sick unto death, right? Now, how many of us, because I know I was in this predicament where I was sick unto death. And when I was sick unto death, I made a covenant with the Most High. And I asked him, I said, listen, if you get me out, I'm going to serve you with everything I got. That's what I'm telling you. Listen, we got to be different. Because the most High have saved all of our lives. Every last one of us. From the sinful paths of our flesh and what we was going down, the most High have saved our lives. 
So in the world standards, when somebody tell the, somebody they got they tell somebody they got cancer or something, right? You got two days to live or two months to live. You know what the world do? They got what's called a bucket list. That bucket list is a list of unrighteousness, a world of iniquity. I'm a jump. I, I, I want to do skydiving. I'm, I'm a bungee jump. None of this stuff glorify the Father. None of it. I, 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 I want to go to Paris for what? To spread the gospel? Just because I've never seen the Eiffel Tower. That Eiffel Tower going to burn. So that bucket list is total bogus. Like when you see the videos and movies that they show, like The Last Holiday or, or, or you know, these movies where somebody either got a, you know, death sentence or this or that, you see them, they balling out and doing everything, you know, spending money frivolously and just living it up. But how many times do you see a movie where somebody's like, okay, you got two months to live, and they just start doing the will of the Most High. Like, I got two months to live? Okay, well, listen. I'm going to get to my whole family and everything that matters and tell them the truth of the Most High. Now, listen, this scripture here detail that if your intentions are pure, when you have a sickness, the Most High will grant you extra time. But if your intentions are wicked when you're sick, guess what? Judgment. You are out of here. And a lot of us, if we made that pledge to the Most High that he, he would get us out of these conditions, we're on borrowed time. We're on extra time. So the time that you're living on is not your own. Watch this now. Come on, read it now. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him. So Isaiah came to Hezekiah and said what? Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order. What did he tell him? Set thine house in order. Now y'all check that out. Now go figure. The man's near death. And the first thing that the prophet, the righteous prophet, tell him, he say, listen, get your house in order. The things that you've been neglecting, get right. You feel like, okay, this is the work, that's the work, let me outreach this, let me go here. No, 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 set your house in order. Before you get up out of here, make sure your house is in order. Because listen... I'm going to tell you like this. You only understand, like us, it tell you Jacob seeker for sign. You only learn by example. If you see a man or even a sister doing great things within the spirit of the Most High, you know what you can find? A stable home. You can find a stable home. You see somebody doing great things within the church, all you have to do is look at the family structure and what they got at home and understand that what's there is stability. And, and, it, and, and it actually represents what the most I would have as a family to be. So when, they, so when you see the prophet here, he's telling them, you, you, you're near death. You know, the first thing, get your house in order. Which should have been the first thing. Come on now. For thou shalt die and not live. See that? For you're going to die and not live. So before you die, make sure you get your house in order. Now check that out. You know why? Because a church is only as strong as the families. Israel is a family. The scriptures say Israel is the, the only family that the Mosai has ever known. 
So if the family isn't right, the body of Christ isn't right. Okay, that's why Satan always attack the family. That's his goal. To break the family apart. Cause division. Okay, read it. Verse 2. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Most High, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. So he wept sore, not because he was dying, but because he was sincere in his prayer. All those emotions, everything he felt, that's why when we talk about, you know, worshiping the Father, and tears come down, that's not demonic. Because of all the, all the things that the Most High brought us through and, and, and is doing for us and have done for us, yeah, that, that's, that's something to, to reflect on. Yes, sir. So Hezekiah is sitting here, and he's reflecting on the works that he did with the Most High mm -hmm. and the service that was done for the good and for the bad. And it said he wept sore. Because guess what? I, I guarantee you he was, he was sorrowful for th the things he didn't do right. Come on. Verse 4. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was, was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying. Saying what? Turn again and tell Hezekiah. the Wait, wait hold up now. So I need y'all to understand an important thing here. Hezekiah prayed to the Most High, right? After the, after the Most High had sent Isaiah to him. So the Most High was dealing with Isaiah first to bring the message to Hezekiah. Now Hezekiah had the message that was delivered to him from who the Most High was working with. Now Hezekiah prays. And guess what? The chain of command still didn't, it wasn't broken. The message went to the servant of the Most High to go back to deliver back to Hezekiah after he prayed. You see how the Most High works in order? He never goes out of order. Okay? I need us to understand this. The Most High will never go out of order read and it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court mm. that the word of the Lord came to him saying turn again and tell Hezekiah the captain of my people thus saith the Lord the God of David thy father I have heard thy prayer I've heard thy prayer imagine that mm. he prayed to the most high now most people be like I'm waiting on God Right? I'm waiting on the Most High to tell me. They would never expect a man to come to them and tell them what the Most High said to them about their prayer. Mm. See, these are lessons that we have to learn now. Because the Most High has and always will work through righteous servants. And if we, can't, if we can't get together and respect that dominion now, we have a, we, we have a fleshly flaw. Okay? So why this, this lesson is, 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 a, is attacking that. Is the flesh your God? Because your flesh won't allow you to understand things that way. Okay? Because you know what your flesh allows you to see? Well, he a man like me. He made mistakes like I did. He ain't always right. But the most have or have mercy on whom he'll have mercy on. And he chose who he chose. <laughs> Can you imagine? 
See, that's why our thoughts are not the most high's thoughts. Come on. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. I will heal thee. Read. On the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Mm. And I will add unto thee, unto thy days, 15 years. Now listen. Mm. He told this man, you about to die in a couple of days. Now this same brother come to him and say, listen, the most I heard your prayer. And he told me to tell you, you got 15 more years of life. Now, listen, there wasn't a sorcerer in the midst. So when a doctor tell you, you got this, you got that, you got 15 years, you got this, you got cancer, you got two weeks to live. I think Elder Lawyer and Elder Gaja this morning said it so eloquently. Our brother and elder Azariah, they told him he had two days to live. Two days. And you know what he said to the elders? He said, listen, I want to live. And he's living. Huh. Send him messages. Oh, praise. Yeah. So to understand the power of wanting to serve the most high, you know, and this is the thing, he don't want to, he wants to live to serve the most high. Just like you see here with Hezekiah. No, 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 I'm not going to grant you 15 years so you could just live life. Okay, if he wanted to live, if he wanted to live extra just to live it up, he would have died then. It ain't about your flesh. But notice what Hezekiah thought on. He thought about his service. And the things that he'd been through to the, with the Most High and leading the Most High's people and prayed sore to him. And the Most High heard his prayer and granted him some extra time and favor to do the work. Go figure. For no other purposes, brothers and sisters. You're not getting extra time so you can go on, you know, this Bahama vacation you want to deal with. No. No. But if you want to do the will of your father, he'll hear you. Go ahead. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria mm. and will defend this city for my own sake. For and, my own sake and what? And for my servant David's sake. See, because look, all of it was for the glory of the Most High. None of it for, was for his own. So, brother, yeah, I'm going to give you some time that you can heal and get yourself together. But when you get yourself together, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to use you to do my will. That's why you're getting extra time, brother. Read. Verse 7. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. Take a what? A lump of figs. Take an aspirin. A lump of figs. Y'all see that? So the Most High is never going to use this, this, this dysfunctional system of what they call medicine. He's always going to use some herbs and prayer. But notice, just like it, it, it is in the Apocrypha, he went to the Most High first. It said he went weeping sore. So anytime that there's a sickness that come on us, an ailment, a problem, 
The first thing we got to do to receive healing is go to the most high weeping sore first. Heavenly Father, to do the work, I need healing. Heavenly Father, if there's anything I've done against you, forgive me. I want to live so I can do your work. And guess what? Just like this, the most I hear that prayer. And sent an herbal remedy. Read. And they took and laid it on the boil. On the boil. And what happened? And he recovered. No, he had a side effect. And he recovered. He had headaches. He recovered. He had suicidal thoughts. He recovered. That's how the most high's herbs work. I'm going to tell you, it's, 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 it's high time that we wake up out of sleep. We've been asleep for far too long. Okay? We got to start to get immersed in the spirit of the Most High and what, what the Most High is saying to this church of Philadelphia. And all the other churches throughout the world. Okay, just trust and believe there is no healing in what they're giving you. There is none. There's, 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 there's a side effect on the end of that. That at a lot of points is way worse than what you're dealing with now. And when it comes down to it, when we're going and we're persecuted in one city, and we're fleeing to the next, you're not going to be able to get your hands on no bear. Okay? You're not going to be able to get your hands on no aspirin. Listen, if you fall for some of it, you'll fall for all of it. Just like when you go on the gathering of Christ, a gathering one four four. I'm gonna tell you, even outside, you know how people will come up, and I hear it all the time, and I look at them like they sideways. I've seen every lesson Elder Ricard ever did, and I'm looking at him like, what does that mean? Watch it again, because if you watched every lesson. I'm pretty sure you didn't, you, you, there are a lot of points that you missed. Because every time I watch a lesson, I see stuff that I've never seen before in my life. But despite all that, that YouTube page is informative. Because there's a section on there that's called My Favorites that people rarely use. And I'm like, man, if you watched every lesson, you ain't stumble upon this. So I know you ain't watch every lesson. Because it's been there the whole time. So my wife and I, she turned it on. Okay. And it's, it's a little, little documentary thing there. Talk about my child with autism. Or my child... What is it, my child, with va that was vaccinated or not vaccinated? So they got two, the bottom line is the couple have two children. One vaccinated, one not vaccinated. Okay, and here's the thing. Sometimes if you won't listen to Judah or Israel, here go the other nations saying it. Okay, so they up there, they got one child, vaccinated and the other one without any vaccinations one child was like three the other child was one now the other the, the one child was vaccinated from birth they stopped at a certain point they noticed the child was fine then all of a sudden he started to regress okay they say that every child you know when they're vaccinated, 
You don't understand, they, they get an ear infection, and doctors tell you that's normal. When your child come out in the first year of life, they get an ear infection, that's not normal, brothers and sisters. If your child have an ear infection, and they've, within that, it's because of the vaccination. Because they had the, the contrast. They had one child that got the ear infection and got the sickness. The other child didn't get it, just like my daughter. My daughter's one. No ear infection. Not normal. So what happened is, the child is three, the young man, they say, is autistic now. So it was the vaccinations that gave him autism. He was, and they said he was, before he got all the vaccinations, he started to speak. He had words, he was using words, he was doing all that. Then after the vaccination, he started to regress. And the one-year-old is speaking, and the three-year-old is just now trying to catch up to the one-year-old. I'm trying to tell y'all, brothers and sisters, there's nothing good with obeying this flesh in this world and what comes with the fears and the fear-mongering that they deal with in the schools, in the programming, and in all that. Okay, hold up, church member, send me this. And keep you anonymous, don't worry about it. What'd that say right there? What is, this is, this is school curriculum. What is that? The five people you meet in heaven. If you don't think when you send your kids to school, they're teaching them religion, you got another thing coming. What, get, yeah, get that. Get that. What, what, what is this? What you see? Wait, I'm going to click on it now. What, what is all that? Uh, it, got a, it has a picture of um, the star David. Well, we know that. Uh, look, 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 look. Yeah. Uh, you see that camera? Look, there go people out there in YouTube land. There it is. That's in your school curriculum right there. Okay? Star David, the Muslim sign, the crescent moon. The wheel, all this, and you got, and they testing our children on this. And then wonder why, when we come home, our kids are all jacked up. They can't function. They getting into this, because guess what? They dealing with spells. They go into school, getting the spirit put on them. How is that an assignment? I never got that as an assignment. What is that? But this is what they, listen, if you think that when you let your kids go outside of, they, out, out of this house, out of your house, out of your protection, that this world is going to protect them, they got another thing coming. You have another thing coming, brothers and sisters. This is why the Most High have revealed to us all things like homeschooling and co-ops and things like that. You got to take it in your own hands. Because then all of a sudden when, when, when your child had problems, this is a direct, that was a direct result of it. Where did it come from? Okay, a spirit entered in. Okay. We really don't understand the importance of watching our children. We just think, oh, they, you know, they go into school. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No, man. It's an agenda out there. That's why everything we do should be led through the spirit of the Most High. Whenever we feel and think carnally and think it's okay, okay, guess what? Just by you being accepting of it, okay, you're complicit with what Satan got going on. Because I got to keep an eye even, e even for my own daughter who's homeschooled. They be te the teacher that's online, they be trying it too. They'll be like, no, 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 listen, 
She's not doing that assignment. How about that? Give her another assignment. And, and my wife and I, we've done that before. No. Okay. Understand, there's, there's, it's an all-out assault. So when we have lessons like this dealing with the spirit and flesh, we have no idea what we're warring against. On every level. My daughter, my son is rebellious. You want to know why? You don't got to look no further than where you sending them. It was something that came up in the, uh, the preliminary talk we had at Tabernacles about town hall meetings and things like that. And the sister was like, well, you know, what if I'm not, you know, I don't want my kid to roam and I have my kid up under me. And Well, that's a good thing. Because I know I was up under my mother and father every step of the way when I was young. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay, you know that natural reaction that kids get and, and all that when they're young and, you, you know, you give that baby to somebody else and they look and, and they take two seconds. And you see them, you, the baby be processing. The smell, because you know the baby senses smell good. They smell, you don't smell like mom and dad. <laughs> Oh, God, help me. Deliver me from this world of iniquity. Listen, them kids be like, listen, they want what's comfortable. That's a natural, that's a healthy reaction. Okay? You're not supposed to, here, take this chip. No. It ain't until a child really get a little older that, okay, now, Okay, the communal aspect come in, but there's a certain time, like what Elder Gaja was bringing in, with the landmarks in the man's life, there's an age of weaning. Y'all understand that? So before the age of weaning and all that, that's not a time to be passing baby along. Okay, take my baby. That, that's, no, that, that's your baby. You and baby need to, to develop a bond. Okay, that's natural. Okay, that's what should happen. And then when they wean, okay, now, all right, great. All right, here go auntie and my mom and all that. But there's a certain time where we have to be very protective, just like every, you know what, every, every, every species in, in, in the universe does that. You try to go to a pack of wolves, and they got some cubs, and see what that little lion, that mother lion going to do. Because listen, in the animal kingdom, it's the mother lions that hunt. You see what they going to do. Ooh, a little baby cub. Man, it'll tear you limb from limb. <laughs> so you have to be protective of yours. And see, these are the spiritual things. You know how it was told to Hezekiah, get your house in order? It's not an offense. People come like, oh, man, oh, let me see the new baby. She don't want to go to me. You know what? They teaching that at home. No, 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 no. That baby want its mother and its fa their father. That's good. Okay. See, we have to understand the aspect of the ministry, and it's not about our will, but the Father's will. And that's spiritual. But let's get back to the scripture. This is uh, the book of 2 Kings chapter 20 at verse 8. Come on now. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? What shall it be? What's the sign? See how Jacob, see, see how we seek of a sign? Mm -hmm. So 
it wasn't even enough then <laughs> for the pre- listen you see i'm gonna tell you i love our people but we got to be the people of the book we hard hit it so it wasn't enough for him to pray to the most high in a random man to come and tell him what his prayer was to me i don't know that might have been enough for me i'd have been like wait how'd you know I ain't pray to you, but you know, you know how Israelites get, you know how we be thinking. Yes, sir. He probably heard me. <laughs> he, he probably was in the next room and, you know, now he coming in, mm-hmm. you know, you thinking he's spiritual. Mm-hmm. Oh, why? Right. So let me, let me test him. What's the sign, brother, that I'm going to receive this healing? Mm-hmm. Not saying that that's what he, but you can imagine this is us. Go ahead. What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go up unto the house of the Lord the third day? Mm. And Isaiah said, this sign shall have, Slaki, this sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? Read. And Hezekiah answered it and answered, it is a light thing. For the shadow to go down 10 degrees. So he like this. So see, Hezekiah still, he like, look, how about if the shadow go 10 degrees, right? If you stand in one place and your shadow move and then it move back into place, is that a good sign for you, Hezekiah? He like, no, nah, that's nothing. That's a light thing. That could have been the wind. That could be anything. Like, no, nah, man. The most I got to show me I'm healed. Oh. Do you see how we say, listen, this is a story of the prophets dealing with our people God. versus a, the book about this, this, this is Israel. Okay, can you imagine? So the most I is using Isaiah and Hezekiah, he, 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 he praying and, and Isaiah, he probably, like, oh man. All right, what, what else, brother? Go ahead. Lost my place. Um, it's okay. Shall the, shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? Come on. And Hezekiah answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. So let it, don't let it just go forward. It got to return back. Then I'll believe. Oh. Read. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord. And he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Azar. Ahaz. Ahaz. Salaki. So now, he get to see the shadow go forward and then come back. He like, okay, the most high is here. But remember, the scriptures say that these, these scriptures are for our learning and for our admonishment. We shouldn't need that now. If we could read a story, we should know, okay, listen, if I pray to the Most High and, and then some, a servant of the Most High come and tell me what I didn't tell them, okay, that should be enough. Because we should have learned from the scriptures that we've read. Okay? There should be a situation now where you need the shadows to move. Okay? Now watch this. For Hezekiah's foolishness, the father smote him with a disease that was meant to kill him. But his humility is what saved him. This generation today is very proud and perverse and looks to wipe out the most high out of their own conscience. Through, though he cries out to us every day. Let's get Job 33 and 14. Read. For the most high spake once, yea, twice, yet man perceived it not. Y'all see that? So the most high come to you once, right? And then we won't hear him. And he'll even come to you twice in an example. And we still at times don't hear him. We don't hear him till the most high tear up behind him. He'll, he come once, yeah, he come twice. But yet we don't hear. Read. Verse 15. In a dream. Sometimes we'll see it in a dream. 
in a vision of the night. And it, it, or you understand sometimes the Most High come to us in a dream or a vision or a nightmare. And scare the ever loving daylights out of us. Like we'll go in right, and you know what, Israelites, like we'll want the we'll want the the uh the understanding of the dream. That'll be the most important thing. Elder, I seen daggers and fire and serpents. What does that mean? And I'm looking at him like hellfire. Like that's all you need to know. I'm not going to break down to you with a serpent. I don't know. Well, if the Most High is showing you like, you know, you in a dream and you just want to wake up. And, ah, ah, okay, yes, judgment. That's all you need to know. Like, get it together. Okay? So the Most High come to you in visions and dreams, and that's a way of chastisement. Read. When deep sleep falleth upon men. And slumberings upon the bed. Come on. Then the openeth, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instructions. Come on now. Verse seventeen, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. Exactly. So those things are to scare the living daylights out of you, so you don't go into the pit, or you don't you don't go to your own destruction. Okay, this is why the Most High send these things and they'll come to us. Read. Verse 19. And he, chast and he chastened also with pain upon his bed. Exactly. You know, you go to bed and you wake up with some, and you, listen, you, you go to bed fine. Mm -hmm. And you wake up with some soreness from West Hill. Mm. Like, what in the world is this? I went to bed fine. Everything was cool. See, this is the thing. We blame everything else around us. Uh. Satan this. I ate this. I slept wrong. My mat Your mattress has been the same mattress it's been since you bought it. Your pillow been the same pillow it was since you've gotten your pillow. Same smell, same slobber, everything's there. <laughs> pillow the same. So now all of a sudden, why did your pillow fail you today? It's not the pillow. You go to bed one way and wake up different. It's chastisement. That's the most high dealing with you. Oh, man, wait, hold up now. Something ain't right here. And the first thing we say, man, it must have been an A.C., I mean, you had the AC on all summer. It must have been that fan. I had the window open. I got a crook in my neck. I got coal on me. What scripture is that? I got coal on me. You got coal in your neck. How you diagnose that? So if I got coal in my neck and I just put heat on, it should fix, right? No, still, you still got the pain. You get out the shower, you still hurt. After the heat compress, you still hurt. It got to run its course because it's something that you haven't learned yet. Okay? Nothing get rid of that pain but time. Now watch this now. Come on now. And the multitude of his bones. In the, see, it, it be in your bones, man. That pain be deep. See, do you understand that everything in life have a scriptural answer? Mm -hmm. Nothing's by chance. See, but you know what? No, it gets in the way. Flesh. When you start to think in your flesh, you start to rationalize and make excuses why these things are happening. Mm -hmm. Instead of going right back to the most high. And saying, okay. It's something that I'm not doing. That the Most High is showing me that I got to get myself in gear. Okay. I'm going to change and adjust. Watch this now. Come on now. And with the multitude of his bones with strong pain. With strong pain. See that? 
Because guess what? Little pains ain't good enough. It got to be strong pain. When you wake up in the morning, you can't turn. And you, your neck don't turn and your whole body got to turn like you RoboCop. Yeah. It got to come strong. Because if it don't come strong, you just pass it off as just a regular occurrence. Do you know nothing happens by chance? The Most High isn't a random God. Malachi 3.6, he changed not. And then it goes on to tell you, so the sons of Jacob are not consumed. So we should be able to read an example in the Bible, see the example, and now the next time something happens, or you wake up that way, you should know what's up. I could go now to Job the 33rd chapter and see what's going on with me. Come on. Verse 20. So that his life abhorreth bread and his soul dainty meat. See, and you don't even want to eat. You know how your back hurts some type of way? Your leg hurts some type of way? And look, the most high, by ch- it's not by chance. He put you on a fast. He make you, he make you refuse that plate. Because there's a spirit that nine times out of ten have entered in. So the most high going to put you on a fast so that you don't, you don't even feel like eating. Oh, my God, I got pains. I don't want to eat. You hungry? No, I don't want none of that. Don't give me nothing. That's humbling you. And you know what? Through all that, we still don't see the most high. And can't quantify, don't even think why I've lost my appetite. You know what? Because then the reason to be, okay, I don't want to eat. Why? Because I hurt. It's like, I, I, I think, I think um, I'm trying to remember, it was Truman, Elder Gabar, or Elder Ricard, but they was having a conversation before, and it was like, if you ask why seven times, you're going to get to the reason. I hurt. Why? Because I don't know. Why? Where's it coming from? Why? You'll get to the most high eventually. You keep asking yourself why. Keep doing it. Because you're going to get to a spiritual source eventually. It's not just by chance. I must have slept wrong. We get every excuse in the book. Man, listen, as wild as we sleep. Okay, arms be all over here, legs be all over here. And listen, you wake up all types of inordinate ways and don't hurt. And some days you could just be sleeping as peaceful as you want. You wake up and be like, oh my goodness. (laughs) And then, you know, eventually we'll we'll say it too and and not... and just dismiss it, be like, oh, this got to be a spirit. <laughs> Most high heal me, elder pray. And not get back to the chastisement. Come on. Verse 21. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen. And his bones that were not seen stick out. Exactly. You get skinny and all that. Read. Yea, his soul draweth near unto, unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. Mm. Verse 23. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him. Then he'll finally del- Listen, sometimes the Most High got to do that. You, you, you be near death. Now the Most High send an interpreter amongst you, and, he'll, and you'll finally hear him. Just like when people are near death and they sick and they on their deathbed. Now they want the preacher. We're the pastor. We're the elder. We're the, we're the this. We're the that. I need some prayer. Why? Because you're near death. And now you realize that, you know, yeah, I got to listen now. Come on. 
and said, Deliver him from going down to the pit. Mm. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto the Most High. He shall do what? He shall pray unto the Most High. He shall do what? Pray unto the Most High. And what shall happen? And he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his face with joy. For he will render unto man his righteousness. Mm. He looketh upon men. And if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit. Exactly, because the first thing we got to do is repent. You can't go, there, there is no hurt without sin. That's, that, that, that's a result, you know, of, of, of the curse of Adam, of wickedness, this body failing us. So there is no, oh, oh, ah. Ah. Oh, I thank the most high for my righteousness and my righteous pain. No. There has to, listen, repentance is key in those moments. Okay, go into the Father in, in, in total, in, in total, you know, submission to Him, and understanding, because at any time, that's that's when we be like, listen, I need the Most High. Come on, His life shall see the light. Mm. Lo, all these things worketh the Most High. Oftentimes with man. Oftentimes. That happens on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. That often, uh, that, that happens often. Come on. To bring back his soul from the pit. To bring his soul from hell. Read. To be enlightened with the light of the living. Mm. Let's go to Psalms 78 and 19. Yeah, this is a great example here. This is the book of Psalm chapter 78 and verse 19. Watch this now. Yea, they spake against the Most High. Yea, they spake against the Most High, right? Read. They said, can the Most High furnish a table in the wilderness? So listen, even though the Most High sent Christ to guide them out into the wilderness parted the Red Sea. Then the minute that they they don't see the miracles happening and stuff going down, now, you know, they talking junk about the Most High and Christ. Can he furnish a table out here in the wilderness? Can he, can, can, can he make a barbecue out here? I'm hungry. Read. Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Now check this out. Read. Therefore, the Most High heard this and was wroth. And was what? Wroth. The Most High sitting on the throne like what? After all I've done to deliver you out of your troubles, it's more complaints. Oh, okay. I got something for that. Read. So a fire was kindled against Jacob. So a fire. You want to make the most high burning mad? That's why I say, listen, we got so much to praise him for. The, the praises are enough. Those things should be co- continual. Because it's been many a time we kindle a flame against us. Where the Most High was wroth with us. Read. And anger also came up against Israel. Mm. Because they believed not in the Most High. See that? Because guess what? When complaining... And murmuring come in, 
You know what it you know what precedes that? Unbelief. See, mo mo most people feel like, well, that's just complaining and murmuring. That, you know, I was just in my feelings. Nope. You can only serve one master at a time. So while you complaining and murmuring, you dealing with the one that started with complaining and murmuring, Satan, who was an accuser of the brethren from the beginning. Why is it this way? Why is it that, Satan? Satan is a hater. Always have been, always will be. And guess what? The lake of fire, he go. Shortly. Come on. Because they believe not in the Most High and trusted not in his salvation. Exactly. Because if you trust in the Most High, you know everything is good. Everything's okay. It'll work itself out. You know, I think as a people, we really don't know the definition of trust. Trust is not in the things that you can see. That's not trust. That's not trust. Trust is in the things that you can't see. Trust and faith go hand in hand. They're synonymous. You can't say you have faith in the most high without any trust. <laughs> Come on. And trusted not in his salvation, though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven. Mm. Man did eat angels food. Man did eat angels food. Read. He sent them meat to the, to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven. By his power, he brought in the south wind. Mm. He rained flesh also upon them as dust. As dust. Listen, it said he rained flesh upon them as dust. That means it, it, it was food to eat everywhere. Nobody was hungry. Nobody. But guess what? Our people, our four parents, they wanted what they wanted. Well, why? Why? Why come, why, why wasn't this way? Well, why the most high ain't bless us this way? Read. And feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. Mm, they was everywhere. So you want a barbecue? Here you go. Chicken everywhere. There go barbecue chicken everywhere. You got chicken and bread. What's up? Go ahead. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. So they did eat. So they did what? So they did eat. What verse you at? Verse 29. Come on now. And were, fi and were filled. Oh, man. This, this, this was, oh, my gosh. Man, this chicken is, is what I've been, this is what I've been craving for, man. Thank the most I. Man, I'm full. This is what I've been talking about. Read. For he gave them their own desire. Oh, you want, you want, I'm going to give it to you. This is what you're asking for, right? Mm. Here you go. Read. They were not estranged from their, from their lust. So they weren't estranged from their lust. Now I need y'all to understand this point. Mm. Because I'm going to teach you that maybe a different angle you probably didn't see this from. But come on. Verse 30, I, I'll read again. They were not estranged from their lusts, but while, they, while their meat was yet in their mouths. Oh, my goodness. Oh, one more bite, man. Put some more sauce on it. Oh, my goodness. Man, forget about that manna. Oh, my goodness. While the meat was still in their mouth. Read. The wrath of the Most High came upon them. He was like, what? Mm. It's good, ain't it? Okay. Who's eating it? 
Who want who wanted this chicken? You didn't want you, the man is not good. You just left it, right? Okay, cool, 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 cool. No, 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 no. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. It's birds everywhere. You did, you, yeah, yeah, this is what you wanted. This is what you prayed for. What I gave you wasn't good enough, right? Okay, no problem. I'm going to give you what you want. It's good, right? Go ahead. The wrath of the Most High came upon them and slew the fattest of them. Oh, yeah? Who ate the most? Oh, yeah. Oh. You see how, listen, they set a snare for themselves. Now, you see how the most high, now, listen, they was all together. This is Israel. But you see how they own lust set them up and they, and they showed who they were serving anyway? The Most High made manifest those that cause offenses, like it say in the New Testament. It says, mark them <laughs> that cause offenses. They were the complainers and murmurers in the camp. Those were the ones that was in their flesh. They didn't realize that the manna that was given was spiritual. They didn't realize that the fact that they, they sandals was on their feet and their clothes wasn't ripped was spiritual. They wanted what they wanted. So guess what? It wasn't the fact that they didn't get it. They got it. But their own desire was their snare. So they showed themselves that day. And I'm going to tell you, those that was righteous, that was sitting there with the fear of the Most High, they wasn't, listen, they wasn't thinking about none of them birds. They was just eating their manna like they normally do. They like, no, 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 no. No, this has been good from the beginning, Most High. Father, this has been good. I'm straight. I don't know what type time they on. Go ahead. And smote down the chosen men of Israel. Mm. For all this, they sin still. They sin still. Still, still didn't get the point. Why, why the Most High do that? Most High ain't do nothing to you. They did it to themselves. Go in. They sin still and believe not for his wondrous works. Mm. Therefore, their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and inquired early after the Most High. Oh, oh, oh now <laughs> he slew them. Right? And then they sought him. Now, when all types of problems started to come in, and I can imagine, I could only imagine, because, listen, it would probably some, some, because notice, it said that the fattest, right, was slew immediately. Right? So let's, let's kind of put this scenario visually. So the most high got birds all everywhere. So obviously the most greedy, they're going to get the birds fresh, cook them up, and eat them. The most high said, okay, these are the ones that are really cancerous. They got to go. Slew them immediately. And then you had probably some other ones that was like, you know what? There's still a couple birds left. I, I, don't, I don't see no problem if I'm, I'm going to mix this with the bread. And, you know, I'm going to add some chicken and bread. And they probably collected it all late and all that. And now, you know, they probably had stomach problems. And that's that the most I slew in them. Oh, my God. Maybe I should have ate that. It was sitting out too, too many days. Uh, help me, Father. Yeah, look what it say here. And when he slew them, they saw them. Wait, hold up now. <laughs> I, the man is good. It's good, I understand. 
Go in. When he slew them, they sought him, and they returned and inquired early after the most. Early. High. Early. Got what? What? <laughs> now they was the first ones up. Go in. And they remembered that the most high was their rock. Oh, now you remember. Okay, I, yeah. There it, there it is. Go in. And the high power, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. And they lied unto him with their tongues. Wait, hold up. So now the healing come in. The blessing come in. Oh, I love the most high. Praise the higher. You the God among all gods. We the chosen people of God. Read. For their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. Wait, hold up now. Now that they good again. They, how soon did they forget? How soon? See, that's how we know we the people, man. We be so set, steadfast, so spiritual on a spiritual high. The first Gather Christ video you've ever seen in your life put you on a spiritual high. It puts you spiritually somewhere you've never been in your life. Opening up the Bible, it's a new book. You flipping Enoch, you flipping Genesis from Revelation, you and Jasher, you and Jubilees, you and the 12 patriarchs. Man, you never seen these books in your life. Then what happens? Baptism. I'm in the body of Christ now. I done made it. Give me a Hebrew name. <laughs> Let me get in one academy. Oh, man, I didn't, I didn't rose. I'm, I'm here now. I got the understanding, man. I got, I got academy under my belt. I got the baptism. I got this. Hey, man, I'm ready. To, where's the next heathen? Let me go street preach. I don't need no elders. Get them out of here. Then something crazy happened. Elder man, I need some help. This is going on, man. This is, it's not going right. I was preaching to the people, man, and everybody was cussing me out. Let me get some more understanding. I was teaching my wife, man, what you taught me about, about, about 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, man. And, 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 and you know what? I went down to Ciroc. You went where? I went to Ciroc. You know when it talk about a wicked woman? Ain't that what you taught me? Wrong. I need help. Then you get right back on track. Everything good. Everything start leveling out. And the minute we get secure again, we forget. We can't forget, brothers and sisters. We got to stay with that same spirit because, listen, when that flesh comes in, the adversary come in too. Forward thoughts come in. All that. Read. Verse 38. Come on now. But he being full of compassion. Full of compassion. Forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. Well, come on now. For he remembered that they were but flesh. He remembered they were but flesh. Read. A wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness mm. and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted the Most High and limited the Holy One of Israel. Y'all see that and it said limited him. Because he could have done greater things with that nation that came out of the wilderness. It just didn't need to be Joshua and Caleb. 
That was our own fault. It could have been it could have been a hundred more brothers and sisters that came out and did great things like Joshua and Caleb did. It could have been it could have been more. But because of sin, we limited the power of the Most High. And so I always give the example. I'm like, listen, y'all, if we ever come in this building or in any holy day on one accord, do you know how the power of the Most High would move? If there's one person that's not in tune, that impedes the spirit of the Most High. You know, it's like you say, we only as strong as our weakest link. So it's like, man, if we come off, if, if one of us is off, we're all off. Because we're part of a body of Christ. Okay? That's how much we should and, and, and be, you know, it should be important to hold each other accountable. Okay, in the Old Testament, you see brothers overzealous talk about they stay in a plague in Israel. They catch people in their adultery. They just throwing stakes in between each other like, ah, oh, sin, I can't take it. Because they understood the power of just two people in a camp of thousands or hundreds tainting the entire camp. And how contagious sin is. It's worse than any chicken pox. It's worse than any house cold. Hatred, envy, all that is worse than any sickness that's on earth. And it's very contagious. And even if you're affected a little bit, if it's in there, like the scriptures say, if your eye be full of light, but yet there's a little darkness in it. How great is that darkness? Like if you come in and for whatever reason, somebody or something have taken from you the fervent spirit you had and the purity of mind that you had when you first came in the truth, you have to understand, you've met Satan himself. That you're affected or infected, shall I say, with that evil seed that was planted in the beginning. That was found within Cain. And so on and so forth. Let's get these next records here. Sirach here in the Apocrypha, chapter 11, verse 7. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing is a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Come on. But if a man live many years. If a man live many years, come on now. And rejoice in them all, yet let him, rend let him remember the days of darkness. For they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. All that cometh is vanity. Read now. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth. In thy youth. Come on. And let thy heart cheer thee in the day of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart. And in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things the Most High will bring thee into judgment. Mm. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart. And put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Exactly. So the things we did in our youth, most of the time, were a waste of time. Simply because they were lust driven. You know, when you're a young man and you start to do things and you start to acquire things. Nine times out of ten, the reason why we acquire is lust driven. I've always wanted that car. I've always wanted a house that looked like this. I've always wanted to buy these pair of Jordans. None of that stuff is the glory of the Most High. 
When we get older, we realize that most of the time when we spend our time acquiring these things, we should have been acquiring spiritual things instead of that. Instead of being content with what the most I have, it's just like all of us. Because you'll see that with, with older folk. Like while you're younger, we spend the majority of our time in our 20s, our 30s, maybe our early 40s, trying to get that max promotion. Busting our behinds to try to get as much dollars and as much money as we possibly can. Then when you get in your 50s and your late 40s, your 50s, your 60s, you're just content with paying the bills and, and, and putting food on the table. You care less about all that other stuff. Then you revert, you go to Walmart, get your clothes. You know what I mean? You, you know, you shop it, you know, from catalogs, don't nobody even know about. You wear upside down Nike swoosh like it ain't nothing. It doesn't matter. You, you, you know, you won't see an older wise man sitting here looking like a walking advertisement with all these labels on him. Because those things aren't important. When wisdom set in, now, okay, now here comes the work and wisdom of the Most High. That's why it says flee you for lust. That's in the flesh. Because a lot of things that we have now that we're working towards and doing, we really don't need. We don't need them. Yet again, we got to ask ourselves why. I'm making this amount. It's paying the bills and this and that. But I need $21 an hour. Why? And that not one time you'll hear out of somebody's mouth so I can make sure I got plane tickets to get up out of here. I'm going to tell you what. You got those plane tickets. That shirt, that belt, and them shoes right there. That's one plane ticket. Boom. See, this is the thing. Like, we say, we, we talk about it. We got to be about it. Because we really show, based on those fruits, what we believe in and who we serve. So I would rather come in here with recycled goods and wear and all that, but make sure that you understand my exodus plan is good. That's more, that's worth it. But when we get older, it says when we get older, but continue to operate in our useful, undisciplined ways, as if we don't all have to meet the judge, one day, it shows really that immaturity. That's what really shows it. You get older, and you still doing the things you used to do in your youth, that's a terrible thing. And you know what, even in the world standards, when we do not think about the church, the worst thing in the world is to see an older man trying to look like a young boy. You, got, you know, you got a 50, 60 year old man, he's single, he got on skinny jeans. You, you understand? In a tight shirt, just trying to hold on, tatted up and everything. That looks simple. You old and gray. You understand? Doing a backpack kid. Get up out of here, man. You got to grow up. So those things are things that we deal with in our youth. Let's skip down a little bit. Let me go down to the testament of Joseph. Me deal with one of our forefathers here. We in the testament of Joseph, 
chapter 2, verse 4. Come on now. For the Lord doeth, doeth not forsake them that fear him. So the Lord doesn't forsake those that fear him. Read. Neither in darkness nor in bonds. Now, ne listen, no matter where we're at, the Most High doesn't forsake those that fear him. Come on. Nor in tribulations nor in necessities. Read. For the Most High is not put to shame as a man, mm. nor as the son of man is he afraid, nor as one that is earth born is he weak or affrighted. But in all these things doeth he give protection in and in divers ways doeth he comfort. Do the Most High comfort, meaning the Most High go out of his way to comfort his children. Read. For a little space he departeth, he departeth to try the inclination of the soul. Now y'all see that? It's safe for a time. There is a time when we're out there in the world doing what we want to do. That that hedge of protection is taken off of us. And a lot of that, brothers and sisters, those are the times that really brought us to this truth. When the Most High took his hedge of protection off of us and we was doing God knows what. And we knew we should have been serving the Most High. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That's to test the inclination of the soul, whether that person really is of the Most High or not. Because person that when the most high's protection is away from them, they'll feel that sense of fear and be like, wait, I'm going too far into the world. And I, 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 I got to get back. I tried it. I put my foot out there back in the world. I seen what it was. And you know what? Ain't nothing out there. All right. All right. Look, I'm good. Read. In ten temptations he showed me, he showed me approved, and in all of them I endured. Come on now. For endurance is a mighty charm. It's a mighty charm, read. And patience giveth many good things. How often did the Egyptian women threaten me with death? How often did she give me over to punishment? And then call me back and threaten me. And when I was unwilling to company to company with her, she said to me. Thou shalt be Lord of me and all that is in my house, if thou wilt give thyself unto me. And thou shalt be as our master. But I remember the words of my father. Come on. And going into my chamber, I wept and prayed unto the Most High. And I fasted in those seven years. And I appeared to the Egyptians as one living delicately. delicately for, they have fast, for they have fast for the Most High's sake. Receive beauty of face. Mm. And if my Lord were away from home, I drink no wine. Nor for three days did I. And it skipped down to the third chapter. Go ahead. Take my That's food. Right. But I gave it to the poor and sick. Read. And I sought the most high early. And I wept for the Egyptian women of Memphis. For, for verily, un, unseemingly, unseemingly, did she trouble me. For also at night she came to me under pretense of visiting me exactly so she just made excuses in the middle of the night to tempt this young man to show you like look it doesn't matter how many times you were tempted you still have to 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 to, to stay the course and do what's right people will use that as an excuse but it was out there i'm a product of my environment Every day I leave the house, it's nothing but drinking and weed and partying and this and that. That, don't that, that, don't, that, that doesn't matter. That's an excuse. Because every night, okay, every night, this young man had a bad young lady come to him in the middle of the night. And I, it, it, listen, guarantee nobody probably knew. But the most I knew. And Joseph kept his integrity. So Joseph learned how to overcome the flesh. And in the end was rewarded by the father for his, for his faithfulness and obedience. 
These days we look to get something for nothing and forget the examples before us who had to deny the flesh in order to, to have great gain as a reward. Satan's rewards are only for a short space, but the Father's rewards are forever. Let's get here. Let's get this here. James 4 and 5. This is the book of James chapter 4, verse 5. Here, okay, go, come on now. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth no grace, wherefore he said, the most high resisteth the proud. So when we don't understand and say we're, we're a little off, and we can look in the Bible and see that we don't have the fruit of the spirit and we don't follow those characteristics. The one thing that the most I resist is the proud. When, when, when you sit there and, and you can say, especially in private, there's nothing wrong with me. Well, listen, you, the Most High is going to give you over to your own strong delusion. He resisteth the proud and do what? But giveth grace to the humble. To the humble. When you humble yourself before the Most High, then he give grace and now you understand what it is to serve him and do right. Go ahead. Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High. Mm. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Draw nigh to the Most High, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Most High, and he shall lift you up. So it talk about you mourning and weeping and letting your laughter be turned to mourning. Why? Because everything in life is a joke. Everything that we feel like is fun in the world is wicked, really, when you come into the truth. All those things we thought was, you know, humorous and, and funny and, oh, this is the move and this is great. We, you know, you end up looking at those things when you come into the truth in shame. You know? You might have gone to, to you know... Uh, a club in the world and be like, oh man, I was dancing with all the sisters. And then when you think about it in the truth, it's like, man, I probably fornicated with all these women in this club. Because Christ said, if you think on it, it's a wrap. Now when you start to, to think about the things that we thought was joyous and fun, they're no longer fun. You know, these are the things that couples and people in the world fight about all the time. But really, it's a, it's a spiritual battle. Well, I'm not doing nothing. I'm going out with my girls. Ain't nothing about to happen. You just don't trust me. I'm going out with the fellas, you know. We about to party up, you know, just a couple fellas. You know, she got trust issues, man. No, because you doing God knows what on both sides. And the things that you entertain and getting into aren't kingdom minded things. They're things that lead to a road of hell. OK, and guess what? They cause issues. Because, you know, the first thing happened, you know, you come home, and, and you were supposed to be home at 1030, you know, and you get home at 1101, I bet you was out with that chick. What was you? Let me smell you. Let me see you. You smell it. Yo, that is too much. That's what the world bring. That's too much. That, that, that's what sin bring in. If we're doing things that are righteous and lawful, these things don't even come up. But this is how the world operate that they feel like it's okay. 
Well, this is just platonic. Nothing happened. We just was having fun. Well, that's why I tell you, let your laughter be turned to mourning. It's like, you, you know, instead of me thinking about how, you know, it, we, you know, we cut it up on the dance floor in a club, the, the laughter and the joy that, that now that I think about is like Elder Gabar getting down to some Haitian music at Tabernacles. And you know what's funny? A lot of people didn't even see that. Just totally missed it. Just, just out. Just, I listen. I, 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 t I was more excited to see that than Elder Elder Ricard do that split. I'm like Elder Gabar. That man, he cutting up right there. And these are things I never forget. That I'm like, yo, this this was crazy. But see, that's in righteousness. Serving the most high, being with the brothers and sisters. And you know what's funny? It's like this. It's like, you, you, you know, it, it, it's, this was an Israelite party, right? You know how many times you was in the world and you paid an inordinate amount to get into a club and stayed to that last song played? To the lights came on. You was in there getting your money's worth. <laughs> the praises go up. The music of the Most High go forth. You know what people do? Oh, it's time for me to turn in. I got to go take my tent up. I'm like, listen, this thing is off. This, this is crazy. Because at the end of the day, man, we're going to be singing and praising in the kingdom for eternity. There ain't going to be no time to turn it off. Let me, let me turn it off. Click, click, clicker. Y'all stop singing. You shy as stop singing. <laughs> Disciples, I'm tired of it. Angels, shut up. You imagine? Like I'm saying that, but I'm, I'm being literal with this thing. I've read enough. To, I've read too many scriptures to understand. You have angels, okay, sons of the morning, that sing before the Father, before the throne. Okay, ain't, ain't nobody cutting out on that. So see how this stuff is like dress rehearsal. It's like, when it really does happen, are you going to be inviting and prepared for the things that are spiritual? But yet and still, I can, listen, the Most High and the angel of the presence that right before you, he could, he, could, he could pull up a date where you probably was at a party and was the last one there. So if he can do that, that angel of the presence. How come he can't pull up a record when he was the last one at a holy party? Now, who did we love more? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just spitting the truth here. Because when it pleased the flesh... You know, we don't ever want it to end. But it's like the things to, 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 that are pleasing to the spirit, we want to quench it all the time. Okay. Get the next record. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, Mm. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Y'all see that? Come on. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, mm. and the spirit against the flesh. So they're contrary. So if you're in the spirit, you're in the spirit. 
But if you're in your flesh, you're in the flesh. There is no mid ground. There is no, well, I'm half spirit today and half flesh, but you know, I'm just human. No, you either spirit or flesh. Which one? Go ahead. And these are contrary. They're what? Contrary. They're on two different spectrums. They're contrary. Come on. The one to the other. The one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Exactly. So if you're in the flesh, you can't do the things that pertain to the spirit. You're not doing the things that you normally would do if you're in your flesh that you would do if you were supposed to be in the spirit. You, you can't comply with the most high. It's hard for you to comply. You can't li- You know that feeling where you be like, I know I'm supposed to do right, I just don't. Because you're in your flesh. That flesh doesn't allow you to comply with the most high. It's only when you're in the spirit of the most high that it'll allow you to follow him with a fervent spirit. Go in. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the spirit. But if you're led of the spirit. Ye are not under the law. Look at that. Come on. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. What's, what, what's, the, what's the works of the flesh? Which are these. Which are what? Adultery. Are what? Adultery. So if somebody's out there dealing with an adulterous spirit. Okay. Who they got is not good enough. That's an adulterous spirit. I could have done better. If I only would have gotten with him in high school, my life would have been better. That's an adulterer. You want to deal with this, this, that, and the third instead of what the most I gave you. See, those, all those emotions and things that range, that's how you know you're in your flesh. Come on now. Fornication. Forna what? Fornication. Fornication. When you dealing with people that the most high haven't promised you to. Period. When you're not dealing with your wife or your husband. Singular. Not wives, not husbands, not jump offs. There are no jump offs in the truth. No taste testing. No try it before you buy it. None of that. Either husband and wife or single. Anything outside of that is sin. Period. If there's not an agreement Amongst the families, it's not a marriage. Oh, well, let me go hijack her. Just like my forefather, we went in a tent. There was an agreement. If there's not an agreement amongst family, it's not a marriage. As it says in the New Testament, marriage is what? Honorable in all. Honor. Like I was saying last night, the most high putting the spirit on me to do a lesson on honor. Honor and integrity. And marriage is always at the focal front of that. Read. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Okay. With somebody, you know, that's why we always talk about keeping the sanctuary clean. That's why, you know, we'll put in little rules and things like that at a tabernacles. If you're sitting on the left side and you're the first one on your table, you captain of a table. We shouldn't have to do that. Why we got to say that? Because we know if we don't say that, people just disappear when the cleaning need to get done, which is part of being in the spirit of the most high. Okay. 
Filth is, being filthy, it, that, that's demonic. I don't care which way you see it. That's nasty. Being filthy is demonic. See, that's how you know, like, when we suffer the curses of Deuteronomy 28, when you come in our neighborhoods and there's trash all over the place, that's sin. Come on now. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Okay. All those, you know, evil thoughts and and just being wicked in your mind, not checking your those forward thoughts and those things that come in your mind. Yeah, that's the flesh. Read idolatry. Idolatry, anything you put before the Most High. Enough said. Go ahead. Witchcraft. Witchcraft, rebellion, if you read in the Old Testament, rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft. Well, you don't want to listen. You might as well listen. Just be doing sacrifices to Molech and Ouija boards and all that. Forget about it, because see, this is the thing. People will deal with the obvious instead of dealing with the reality. Rebellion is just as bad. Read. Hatred. Hatred. If you got hate in your heart, for whatever reason, you know how people come up and be like, yo, I just don't like them for whatever reason. That's a demon. How are you going to not like somebody and you don't know the reason why you don't like them? I just got a feeling. You know what that feeling is? A demon. I just, I just don't like, I feel like I don't like him. That's a demon. How you, how you, how you come to that conclusion? What, what, what merit and what, thi what, what thing have brought to that, brought you to that conclusion? Why you don't like him? I, I just don't know. That's, listen, brothers and sisters, if anybody ever tell you that, that's not a valid excuse. Hey, brother, why you don't like that brother, man? I don't know. I don't, I don't like him. Why you don't like that sister? I, I don't know. Maybe it's the way she do her hair. That's not a valid excuse. You know, you know somebody dealing like that. You know you're dealing with Satan. Come on. Variance. Variance, right? Come on. Em 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 emulations. Emulations. Come on now. Wrath. Wrath. Okay, wrath is, 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 is a product of all the things aforementioned. Were you always angry? What you angry for? The Most High is soon to send Christ to deliver us out of all of our troubles. What you angry for? It's about to be a rap. Read. Strife. Strife. So like I said, any time that there's striving, there's an argument, there's a disagreement, you got to know that Satan's in the midst. When you can't come to an understanding or an agreement, well, brother, I, I, I just agree to disagree. Well, you know Satan's there. Satan's is, is he listen, that, that, that man is all up in that midst. Read. Uh, strife, seditions, heresies. Heresies, see? Because they minister to one another. Because then you want to do your own thing, which is being a heretic. Just go in a different way in the way that everybody else is going. Everybody's doing this. You want to do this. Okay? There's a reason why the Most High have us all uniform. Even in heaven, everybody in white robes. Everybody doing this, everybody doing that. It's not doing, listen, the kingdom of heaven is not about you doing your own thing. Well, the most I did this, the most I made me to be different. 
Okay, you're not going to be so different that you're not going to follow what the Most High is dropping. Come on. Envyings. Envyings. See, and this is what we was breaking down last night. All the other sins that you deal with in Exodus 20 and all that people will admit. I could admit that. So you know what? You'll get brothers and sisters to say, hey, brother, back in my past when I was out there in the streets, man, I killed somebody, man. And, 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 and I feel terrible for it. I hope I, I pray that the most high forgive me and the body forgive me, man. Somebody come out. Hey, brother, I sinned, man. I slept with this sister, man. I fornicated. I pray that you forgive me and the church forgive me. But you know what somebody won't come out and say? Hey, brother, man, forgive me, man. I envy you. I want to be you. I covet your life. I covet your situation. I want to, did, did nobody ever come and say that? That's sitting right there of coveting and, and your own lust and what you want and the desire. See, that have a lot to do internally. Because that's something that's almost, you know, when you deal with it, it's premeditated. You've thought about that hour in, hour out, this day, that day, comparing and contrasting your situation to their situation. This, that, to this, to, to, that take a lot of thought to deal with the spirit of envy. Envy is what, 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 was, what was dwelling in Cain. For, for, forget before the murder happened, the envy was greater than the murder. The envy is what brought the murder on. Oh man, what offering? The Most High's not, he, 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 he's not satisfied with my offering? I hate him. I hate my brother. He got to go. It's a deep sin. And it's the, one, it's the one that people rarely admit to. I want to be him. I want to be her. I want to do what they're doing. Come on now. Murderers. See, because look, see? So the spirit of envy, and then the next thing you know, murderers. Come on. Drunkenness, revelings, and such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Come on. But the fruit of the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is what? Is love. Is what? Love. Is what? Love. So listen, I'm going to tell you, and we've all experienced it pretty much at, you know, except for the, the real youngins. Like, you know, you, you, you have a child or you, you meet your wife. And you got that love. It's like you don't never want to be apart. When you really hit that true love, like you, you feeling it. Well, that's what we should be with the Most High. Like we never want to be apart from the Most High. That's why it baffled me. We'll cut the Most High short. We'll cut his holy day short. Why? Don't you want to spend every moment? It's like we'll run, like, like after, after you leave the most high, what's there? The, your job. Mm -hmm. You run into that? What's back there? The bills? You running back to the bills? 
It's like, man, when we get the opportunity to spend time with the Most High, we should want to spend as much time with the Father as possible. Read. Joy. Joy. And see, joy come when the Spirit of the Most High come in, when wisdom come in. That's joy come in. Nothing can shake you. You're happy because you have a different peace that's over top of you that the world can't take away. Read. Peace. Peace. And see, you're peaceable. And you have peace. And you have a calm. You, you, you're not one of those people that are unsettled. Unstable. Okay? Unstableness and non-peace is a sign of a spirit dealing with you. You're all over the place. You're emotional here. People don't know how to approach you. Nobody can say anything to you. If they say something to you, they got to worry about how you're going to react. That, 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 the righteous, listen, everybody want to be around the righteous. Because they know it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a laugh, a joke, a, a, a exhortation, or something deep or profound. Come on now. Long suffering. Long suffering. And that's what come being under the fruit of the spirit. You're able to endure. Okay. In this truth, if you have a true love of the most high, you will develop a spirit of long suffering. And listen, what, what goes on around you and uh, uh, this and that won't stop you from serving the most high. Go ahead. Gentleness. Gentleness. Come Goodness. On. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Against such, there is no law. There's no law. If you operate in that spirit, you understand there's no law against that. I was looking for a particular scripture. But nonetheless, for the sake of time, I want to read the commentary on the way out. So time is almost up. And the time to change is long past overdue. Get right or get judged. And help who you can while you still can. Shalom, let's give the most high some worthy praise.